Want to give your footage a grungy antique look? Well, in this video, I show you the perfect plugin to do that. This video is brought to you by Amazing Music Tracks. Licensed hundreds of royalty-free tracks for your videos, films, and more, including the music in this video. Check the description for a link and a 10% off discount. Red Giant's Misfire is a really cool plugin that lets you emulate a lot of the aspects of older footage like grain, scratches, vignette, flicker, all that sort of thing. There's a lot of options to customize the look, so whether you have the program and want to learn how to use it or are interested in buying it, let's dive in and cover it all. So as you can see, I have Misfire applied to some footage here. So if we go in and look, we can see Misfire just at first glance um, can be a fairly simple plugin, but then as we dive in, you see there's a lot of customizability. Now at the basic level, we have a bunch of presets um, covering 60s footage, um, very distorted footage, just different kinds of um, settings that you could start with if you wanted to. Um, but we're actually going to go in and look at all the effects individually. Now before we do that, I want to point out up here, um, you can see we have these two sliders, damage amount, color amount, and these allow us to uh, control the different effects. So for example, the damage amount controls stuff like scratches, grain, and you can see as I slide it, it changes how much of that you can see. And then the color affects things like the vignettes, the fading, um, softness, all that sort of stuff. Now I'm going to leave those at 100%. You'll also see there's a random seed here that you can put in a number and it will randomly generate a bunch of settings based on that. But we're going to go in and look and see what you can pull off when you go through and tweak each of the settings individually. Now to begin with, I have all of the settings disabled except for softness. Now softness um, is fairly simple to understand. It's basically applying a blur. Um, Older footage is often lower resolution, which means it's softer um, compared to a lot of modern digital footage. So we can apply a tiny bit of softening, um, and you can see that it'll just uh, lower the resolution a little bit, lose a little bit of detail to get that kind of effect. Now our next is controlling the saturation. Now what this is actually doing, normally a saturation control would increase the saturation, but as you can see, um, this is actually, by default, decreasing the saturation. Um, now we can up it and oversaturate the image, but by default, this is going to be designed to fade it. We could put the saturation all the way to zero and just go completely black and white. Um, but by default, it's set at 50, which is just a slight desaturation, just losing a little bit of the color, a little bit of the vibrance that um, is a lot more common with modern digital. You could up the saturation if you wanted to go for like a Technicolor type look, um, but I, this isn't necessarily a plugin for that. This is more going after the kind of grungy look. So uh, in that case, fading it is usually the way you'd want to go. And we also do have a separate fading plugin. You can see um, the fading not only removes some of the saturation, but you can also see it kind of washes it out, kind of pushes everything towards gray. We can also defade, which will actually bring out some of the contrast and some of the color. Our saturation is mainly controlling the, the color, but this is more of the contrast and stuff. And so we could actually, again, remove the uh, fading or make it fade even more. And I'll just leave it a little less faded just because I, I think that looks interesting. Now funk, as you can see, is kind of a it's an overlay effect, and you can see it's got kind of a splotchy effect. Um, obviously the 100% is way too much, but if we play that back, you can just kind of see what it's doing, creating a little bit of uh, variety, a little bit of distortion. So that is what the funk does. Now splotches are similar, um, but the splotches, we have a little bit more control. The uh, funk is just a purely overlay but the splotches are actually generated, so you can see we can control um, how many splotches there are, how visible they are, so you can see if I raise the, saturate, or raise the opacity up, you can kind of see them there. Uh, we can control how frequent they are, how big they are, so we can have really big splotches, we can have smaller splotches, 
Uh, again, we can control how many splotches we have. We can control how frequently they pop up. If we play that back. You can see that's obviously over-exaggerated, but that's the kind of stuff you can get with these splotches. Um, and I'll just set the opacity to zero so we can move on with some of the other stuff. We also have a dust control. Again, we have kind of the same controls. Uh, if I up the opacity, uh, maybe the frequency, so you can kind of see what that's doing. That's just adding little dust spots. Um, and you can see we also have options for either white or black dust. Now, if we add that, it looks like salt and pepper. Again, this is over-exaggerated, but you can kind of see what that's doing, and normally that would be a lot more subtle. So if we kind of bring down the opacity, uh, bring down the frequency, you can kind of see what that's doing. Again, let's set the opacity to zero, so that way we can see some of the other effects. Now, flicker. Flicker is um, an issue created when you have film rolling through a uh, camera, especially on an older camera, older projector. So if we add the flicker, uh, that's a time-based effect. So you can kind of see that if we play. You can see there's a little bit of light flickering that we've got now. Um, and we can control the frequency and we control the amount. So we've got those controls as well. Uh, we also have a vignette. Vignette, pretty easy to understand. Um, we can control the size of it and also uh, the intensity. Oh, I should enable that. So you can see we can kind of bring that in. Now, one thing I would say about the vignette is that this vignette control is not very advanced at all. And if you have a vignette plugin of any kind, that'll probably give you more utility than this vignette plugin does because you can't control the feathering, the midpoint, um, the uh, aspect ratio, the roundness, you can't control any of that stuff. This plugin only lets you change the size and the intensity, which is basically the opacity. So um, if you want to add a vignette to your footage, I wouldn't use this plugin. I would use uh, a more advanced plugin that gives you more options. And I think Premiere has one even built in that's better than this. So if you want to add a vignette, I would just skip this part and I would uh, use a separate plugin to do that. Now we can also have our displacement that kind of just offsets the footage. So sometimes uh, when you're playing film back through a projector, sometimes it isn't perfectly lined up. So that's kind of what the displacement is doing. Now we also have, I'm actually gonna cover these all at the same time. We have our micro scratches, our deep scratches, and our basic scratches. Now you can already see on the footage, we've got these lines, those are the scratches. Um, I can play that back and you can kind of see it's a ton of scratches. This would probably be way too many scratches. Um, so kind of taking it one at a time, the micro scratches are just these really small, um, really narrow scratches. Uh, we also have our deep scratches. You can see we've got those really deep, really uh, aggressive scratches. And then our basic scratches are kind of in between the kind of medium size scratches. Now, if I was doing this, I would personally avoid the micro scratches because I think they're a little too aggressive. The deep scratches as well. The basic scratches kind of fit the spot where it's the typical kind of scratches you would often see in footage. And I, I certainly wouldn't use all three of them together. I would probably only use at most two of them together because when you have lots of scratches, it can get kind of excessive and look a little too much, a little too faked, a little too obvious. Now again, with the each scratch control, we can actually control the scratches, the duration, so how long each scratch lasts. And then you can also adjust the tint. So if you want the scratches to be a certain color, um, you can do that. And that's actually only a control for the deep scratches because you could see with the deep scratches, um, you had that kind of greenish tint to them. The smaller scratches don't have a tint. Now going back up here, we also have our grain. This is color grain. Um, you have a ton of controls here. You've got the amount, you've got the color, you've got the scale, which is the size of the grain. And then you also have a variety of controls to alter the uh, how the grain responds to different colors. So if you want there to be more grain in the red part of an image, because if you look at actual 
film stock, the grain reacts to different colors differently. So you can kind of tweak that to emulate the look of certain grains. So I can play that back and you can see the grain. And you know, that's kind of a characteristic of um, some digital footage, early digital footage or VHS footage. So uh, if you're creating a certain look, you wouldn't necessarily want to mix the grain with, say, the scratches, because uh, you wouldn't typically see those in the same type of footage. Now, the color grain, like I said, it would be more similar to what you might see on a VHS, but the luminance noise is um, what you would traditionally think of as like film grain. So you can see if I play this back, uh, it's very aggressive, but that's what uh, you would typically think of as film grain. You can see we have a number of controls. We can control the opacity, the amount of noise, the contrast of the noise, the size of the noise, and a number of other things. We could have much smaller noise, and uh, much smaller, finer noise would generally be associated with larger film stocks, so like 35 millimeter, whereas the larger is more like, um, you can see if we bring this up, this would be more like eight millimeter footage. Now the last couple things, we've got gate weave. Gate weave um, is somewhat similar to displacement in that it's an effect where the uh, film stock going through a projector or a camera isn't perfectly lined up with the uh, sensor or the light or the lens or whatever. Well, the difference is that in displacement, you just have it's displaced one way or the other, but with the gate weave, it's actually moving back and forth. So you can see if I play the, this, you can see it's kind of wiggling back and forth and I'll actually um, I'll up that so it's more obvious. Now that's really excessive and you definitely wouldn't want that much, but that's kind of, that's what the gate weave is doing. It's kind of moving back and forth randomly to simulate gate weave in a projector. And then we also have our contrast. Now this is actually kind of a post color thing where it's actually uh, using a contrast control to help kind of blend the footage. So you can kind of tweak that. And you can see if I up the contrast, it's upping the contrast of the effects as well. So if you wanted the footage to have a certain amount of contrast, instead of applying that beforehand, you can apply it afterwards where it's going to simulate, um, it's going to be affecting the contrast of the different effects as well to kind of, um, glue them together. So if you want a little bit of contrast at the end, you can do that in the plugin with that post contrast, just to tweak everything together. But anyway, that is the plugin. It's not a super complex plugin. Once you understand what each of the different things do, uh, it's pretty easy. And another neat thing is that if you want to maybe apply these in a different order, this is this order that exists is probably the best order typically speaking, that you would want these effects applied in. But say you want to mix it up a little bit. Misfire actually comes with, and I'll flip over here to show you, comes with all of the uh, different pieces broken down. So I could actually take, you know, if I want to just dust or just flicker or just gate weave, I could take that individual plugin, apply that, mix up the order, maybe just use one of the effects rather than having the whole plugin, whatever I want to do there, I've got those options. So it's a really cool plugin. It has a lot of um, really neat tools, a lot of neat stuff you can do if you want to emulate older footage. Um, and really powerful and definitely I would recommend um, trying out the plugin if you have Universe. Now if you don't have Universe, is it worth buying a Universe subscription which is like $100 a year just for this plugin? Probably not unless you're going to use this plugin a lot. But there's a lot of cool other stuff in Universe. There's some VHS emulation plugins. Um, there's a lot of just general color correction, motion graphics plugins. There's a lot of neat tools. Um, so I wouldn't say don't get a, or I would say don't get a Universe subscription just for this plugin, but it is a really cool tool to have in your toolbox for a variety of stuff um, if you do pick up a Universe subscription. But anyway, that is it for this video. So if you like this video, if it helped you to decide um, whether or not to get a Universe subscription, or um, if you already have one, how to use Misfire, hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button.